and then you tighten this back onto it before that temperature gets too high and we have a blowout. It's temporary. We just put it on last night. Big uh, dog park here too. This always makes me nervous. I can just keep an eye on it and make sure it's going to stay. I called Equalizer and also read you'll get all caught up in things and sometimes you just forget something. I spotted it on the map in the little black box. 38.1 but you don't want it to come back too far. <laughs> start things off here we're going to talk about this TST 507 model. Eric over at Techno RV sent this to us. We had one on our motorhome Vinny. We sold that with that coach and Eric was kind enough to send us another one. They have one with the flow through sensors. That's these right here. You put this on your valve stem first screw this down and then you tighten this back onto it and you use this tool here to get to it. Wrong tool and you back it into it and it locks it in place. The other kind of sensor we have is the cap sensors. We had the previous model where these tops would spin for the anti-theft. Now the new version of this, they're all solid. Same thing, put your nut on first, screw this down to it and back the nut up. And that's where the shorter wrench comes into play. And that will tighten that nut up against this. Now when you're setting these up, I'm not going to go through the whole setup process. And it is very easy, very simple to do. Eric over at Techno RV has great video tutorials on this and other products as well. I've got these laid out just like I want them. Now the, the system comes with labels. So I've got these labeled. The four cap sensors are going to be for the truck. And the four flow through sensors are going to be for our Airstream. Why have different ones for each? Because you have to have metal valve stems in order to use these flow through sensors. These are the only ones that you must use a metal valve stem. And that's because of the weight of these. And when you're going down the road, it really puts stress on your rubber valve stems. Your cap sensors, those can be used on either one. Rubber valve stems or your metal valve stems, these will work. These, if you want quick access to put air in your tires or let air out it's much easier with these you have to use your wrench to back that lock nut off and then take them off and why didn't we put metal valve stems on the truck well that's because the truck is equipped with the tire pressure monitoring system of its own but it's different than this and those valve stems on a truck tire they have the TPMS built into the back of that valve stem so if you're going to change those out and put metal valve stems on unfortunately you're going to have to change your TPMS sensor on the back of that valve stem this tire pressure monitoring system does have what's called a repeater to explain what a repeater is if you don't know so that gives you a little bit more range to reach your tire sensors so here's your monitor it gives you all the information and lets you know what your tire pressures are and your temperature. So this has the ability to reach, but I think it's between 35 to 40 feet. From what we were told when we called TST, there's a lot of interference anymore. So it's always best to have this repeater on. This range is 35 to 40 feet. And when you hook this up, it extends the range of this to 100 feet each direction. The best place is to put it behind you like the front of our Airstream has a battery compartment. We'd be best off putting it there, of course. If I put this in the truck under the hood, for one, it's safer, it's, it's harder to get into, and two, it's still gonna give me my range and it's close to this where they can communicate with each other better. We don't have that much of a length and we don't have a tow car behind like if we had a Class A. This is going to give plenty of range, 100 feet. And another thing that I found out from TST, if you do not use the repeater, even though this has plenty of distance to make it to your tire sensors, and you end up having an issue with your TST system, this is the first question they said that they ask if you have this repeater installed. They said it used to be that they didn't require this to be installed, but with all the interferences out there anymore, they say it can and will affect your TST system, so it's best off just to install it. It's really simple. You just put your positive and your negative right to your battery terminals. You need 12 volts for this to work. Part of this is setting your very last setting, and that is your high temperature warning. In my opinion, that's the most important. And when you get your system, 
it's going to default to 158 degrees. So when you go to that setting on here, you're going to see that it says 158 degrees. Based off of our experience and what we have learned, we are not, again, we are not professionals at this, but a tire breaks down when it starts to reach around 210 to 215 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. And that's all tires. It doesn't matter if it's a semi-tire, a truck tire, a trailer tire. It doesn't matter. At 158 degrees, that gives you enough fair warning. 158 degrees is still high for a tire and you should never get there. So if you do start to get to that point, that gives you plenty of time to slow down, pull over, figure out what's wrong with your tire. That 158 was set in here on purpose because it gives a really good baseline for all tires before that temperature gets too high and we have a blowout. In fact, on your uh, high temperature warning, what you'll notice is all of the tires on the whole screen will be blinking at the same time and you can only set one temperature for all of them. So that tells you pretty much right there that is a warning sign for any tire no matter what tires you have. That being said I'm, I'm just going to keep all the sensors at 158. Uh, a couple other things you get with this system you do get a windshield mount, a uh, suction cup windshield mount and then you get this too that you can just put on your dash and it sits nicely like that. So now I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna install these on the truck and the Airstream, and I'm also gonna install this repeater. I think I'm going to put this on the truck with the RV. We're in an RV park most of the time, but sometimes we are dry camping somewhere. So every little bit of juice you can save on your batteries helps. So I think I'm gonna put this on the truck. And again, remember, this gives your system 100 feet instead of 35 to 40 feet so it doesn't matter where this is it's going to give you that 100 feet in all directions and um, and it's closer to your unit so it's it's a good choice so you take your nut put that on your valve stem put it all the way down make sure you go all the way down in case you go so far with this and it tightens up against that nut that way you have room now you put this on you're gonna lose a little bit of air at first but keep going get it tight now back that nut up till it's snug up against the back of that. Now take your wrench, hold this, and turn that nut against it really tight. Now I can't loosen that. There's your anti-theft. When they put the camper shell on, this is the wire that they hooked up for the light to the camper shell. And I just hooked the uh, TST system up to it here also. So, and then I've got it sitting right here. I just used some command strips and stuck it right there. If that thing were to ever come off and fall, it's going to fall right there at the bracket and it's not going to go anywhere. There's a bracket for the uh, for the battery. So it's out of the road if I ever need to get any of this out of there. But yet it also supports it if the tape were to come off and it's just going to stay right in there. And I can just keep an eye on it and make sure it's going to stay. It does come with some 3M tape, but if I ever want to change RVs again, um, might want to take that out and take it with and it'd be a lot easier getting that out with that or near an air force base without trying to peel this tough stuff off we can get the command strips off much easier another thing i want to touch base on is tire protection beyond your tire pressure monitoring system. A lot of people use tire covers and they put tire covers over them. Some people don't believe in them because they hold heat in. You have some tire covers that just cover the outside only and it lets the tire breathe. Another thing is a good UV protectant to put on your tires. This 303 protectant, um, we are not affiliated with them. We don't get any kickbacks from them. We just like the product. It is a very good UV protectant. 303 protectant, ultimate UV protection. We're going to take off this morning, going to leave Yuma and head to our next destination. And uh, uh, yesterday I got a little shoe organizer. Put it on the back side of the door here. You just cut it. And right now I got a safety pin on here. Um, but safety pins are on here for now and don't really care how that looks. So it's temporary. We just put it on last night when it was late. <laughs> just wanted to see what it would look like. Uh, but you do have to cut it, put it on there, no big deal. But it keeps the shoes off the floor, especially when you don't have anywhere else to put them. 
I'm going to go around and check the air in the tires. Make sure they're good. I recommend you always do that. We have the TST TPMS system, but I also want to check it here and make sure that they are jiving with each other. Right now we're going to go through all of our cupboards since we have been moving things around a lot lately and just double check to make sure there's stuff that is going to be sturdy and not uh, fall over easy. Got a couple little cheese stick snacks and water. I think it's time to saddle up, Sally. <laughs> Big uh, dog park here too. It's probably the biggest one I've seen. More like a dog run. Two to three weeks, I think, is kind of a max. Yeah. You always know if you're doing this to try to find that that perfect place that you may want to land someday. You always know it's not the place when you're ready to go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very few places have we found so far that we wanted to stay even longer, but they're out there, which makes your decision for later someday even harder when you have so many places that you like. This always makes me nervous. Um, it did in the motorhome as well. Like the first part of pulling out of the park and going down the highway, because it's like, that's where you're going to like Just hear things or <laughs> feel something. It's like, I'm always like very cautious right away. You know what I just realized? What'd you forget? We forgot. We don't have our GPS set yet. Oh. Where, where are we going? <laughs> We're going to... BFE? Yeah, we are. That's what happens when you're nervous with a new rig. You're always afraid that you're forgetting something. And you usually are. <laughs> this time... GPS. The GPS. <laughs> to a uh, kind of a truck shop and had our equalizer hitch moved up a notch. I called equalizer and also read the user manual and it tells you everything on the specs and everything with this. These had to be torqued at 320 foot pounds. So when I went there, the guy took his air wrench and he said there's no way these were torqued anywhere near this because my torque wrench only goes to 200 and he zipped them off really easy. So they have this huge uh, a torque bar they use for semis and things like that and they torque those down to 320. I only moved it one notch right now because I wanted to see where it's at before I go too far with it. This is the first time we hooked it up since I've done that so now I want to look and see what it looks like. It's actually not too bad. It doesn't look too bad at all. I'll try to get to a flatter area later and just to do another look at it but I think we might be okay right where we're at. Where'd Michelle go? One thing that's nice about when you're traveling and you're living this life basically is you don't ever have to be in a hurry. You don't have to try to take the fastest route anywhere. 
take your time, make some stops, look and see what there may be to do along your route or to go off your route a little bit. There's a lot of things to see out there to make your trip worthwhile. Sometimes you want to make it by check-in or something so that you get a good sight if you're going to a place that has first come first serve but in this case they assigned us a site already so we already know where we're at so there's no reason to be in a big hurry um i think that's all i got maybe she went home ah are you thinking about making something for lunch well i was going to get these pecans for one yum and it took a pee break it's a good thing to do when you're when you buy a new rig and you're just starting out with your new system to make sure everything is riding well the way you have it. Let's check the brake lights. Good idea. We're bad. We didn't check our lights before we left. You'll do that. You'll have a system. You'll get all caught up in things and sometimes you just forget something. Ain't that right, Sally? That is. In Arizona, Valley Vista RV Resort. We had our mm -hmm. check in papers. Yep. And where were they located? Uh, in the little black box next to the door. Glad we got here before dark. I gotta use the boys' room. We got all hooked up and did a couple speed tests. So far, this is just the first test we did. And as you know, they always vary and they keep going up and down a little bit, but you get the gist of the speed tests when you at least do your first one. Um, Verizon is 8.95 download, 1.32 upload. Not the greatest. Now we got this phone hooked up to our Wi-Fi for our AT&T. We got 21.5 download, 8.96 upload. So AT&T seems to be good. All right, so here we are in the middle of the week and I thought I'd do some more speed tests. Sometimes it's a little different than it is on the weekends and everybody's streaming. Verizon today is getting a 38.1 download and a 3.98 upload. So that's pretty good. And then with our AT&T, we have the uh, Netgear Nighthawk uh, little router. And so we've got this Michelle's phone here hooked up to AT&T. And we got a 50.3 download and a 10.9 upload. So that's here at Valley Vista RV Resort in Benson, Arizona. So if you're thinking about coming here and you need internet, good cell service, not too shabby. So I just want to point out something. Um, Looking and eyeballing your trailer to see if your equalizer hitch is set up correctly. It's not really the proper way. You need three measurements. All three of these measurements are going to be in your front wheel. You just need to do one side from the ground right through the middle of the axle up to the top of the fender. You take that first measurement with no weight on your hitch, nothing on it. Take your second measurement, hooking up your trailer, 
and just the weight of your trailer only, not the equalizer hitch. As far as the, you know, your bars out here that takes the weight off, third measurement is with everything hooked up, your equalizer hitch hooked up to show you how much weight has been taken off. So you take your first measurement, Let's say that first measurement is 39 inches from the ground to the top of the fender. Let's say your second measurement with all the weight on the trailer on here is 41 because when you put the weight on this hitch, it brought the front end of the truck up because it's putting the weight on the back of that truck. So now we're at 41 inches up here. So we hook up your equalizer hitch and now we're expecting this weight to come off of that back end. So we want this to come back up, but you don't want it to come back too far. And that's how you know if you have this set too high. Um, so these two bolts, they're supposed to be torqued at 320 foot pounds. If you have this up too high, then the front of the truck's gonna go down and you don't want that. You want it just about right, about that halfway point. So your first measurement, 39. Second measurement with weight on here was 41. What we want it to be at is about halfway point about 40. So if my first measurement was 39 inches with no weight on there, second measurement with all the weight on here was 41. Halfway point is going to be 40, so I want anything from 40 to that 39, and that's your safe area. Don't want anything any less than that 39 because then you're just, all your weight's going towards the front. So that's how you're supposed to do it, and uh, Equalizer does have online manuals on these. This is the 14,000 pound hitch. And actually on that manual, page 16 is where it talks about this. So, hope that helps. If not, I don't know what to tell you. Let's call it a day. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click that little bell, and hit that thumbs up. See you next week.